Hi guys, welcome back to another one of my kit videos. I fully appreciate the kit videos are probably starting to drag on a bit now, so I thought I'd go out with an absolute bang. This is pro my pride and joy. This is my Silverback SRS A1 20 inch Sport. Although it's not 20 inch, and there's nothing sporty about it. My wife bought me this as a Christmas present two years ago, and it has been a constant build project ever since then. I think I'm about done with it now and I would love to show you through my rifle from front to back or back to front or, or even through the middle as we go. So I'll point out the bits out as I go and apologies if I miss anything and I, I end up coming back to it. So um, base gun was a 20 inch sport. It was the A1 2019 version 3 model thing. So it was the last one of the A1s. Um, olive drab base. Um, just purely because you know, it's a sniper. Why have a black sniper? Boring. Um, and it came as a 20 inch sport. I have swapped some parts out. So I'm going to start from the front and I'm going to talk you through. So this is the 338 DTSS silverback suppressor with all the foam bits in it. I do have a barrel stabiliser about here. Again, silverback. Um, because my inner barrel is 375 millimeters long. I'll cover the inner barrel as I get a little bit closer back here. So that's keeping everything tight up front. As you can see, I have camo taped the, the black receiver parts. Standard trigger on there. I have played with the dual stage triggers and they are nice, but it's not my thing. As we work our way along the externals to the back, I have swapped out the standard bolt, uh, kind of the, the cocking, handle. Um, I believe this one's called the operator. It's kind of like an, is it hexagonal? It's a hexagonal shape uh, rather than kind of the, the, the ball. Um, I just find it better. I don't, I find myself not rocking around on it. I find myself quite, you know, statically using it so it fits perfect. And then as I move towards the back of my rifle, I've got a custom uh, kind of dust plate in here, which has got my name in, engraved into it. That's 3D printed part. Bought it from a guy in Portugal when I very first joined on the Facebook forums, so on, so forth. The stock itself does have some cotton wool filling in there just to try and dull things down. And it is extremely quiet. Scope sitting on top here. Um, I believe it's a Swiss Arms 3 to 9 by 50. So it's a very nice clear scope. Um, I bought this scope originally for my VSR and then it found its way onto here with some high scope mounts. And um, to be honest, I couldn't be happier. It's a fantastic, lovely, clear scope. And I've run it about four or five times. Um, as we start going inside the gun, um, I've already mentioned my barrel. So the barrel is a 375mm PDI 605. Um, I went PDI because my personal feeling is that PDIs are just the best barrel on the market. You buy them, they work amazingly. They don't have weird quirks like dual bores or they don't have weird slots cut in them or anything like that. My only criticism of a PDI barrel is number one, they come quite mucky so you do all, you have to clean them quite well when you first get them. And number two, um, the hop window is quite small so you are quite limited, you can't use the really big patches uh, with these. Although they do work with silverback bookings really really well. This one isn't using that which, which brings me on nicely to the next point. So. I use a fast hop up, so I've got the little kind of roundy control on there. Um, the fast hop up just allows me to, you know, kind of tweak it in game if I need to. Um, on top of that fast hop up, not on top, kind of within that if you like, um, my PDI barrel slides in. I am using a faceless 60 degree R hop patch. I'm using a faceless faux nub, so the full open window nub, so fully, fully seats over uh, into my R hop patch. And then I didn't have a lot of luck with the faceless uh, full seal booking. So I'm actually using a silverback 70 degree booking, which we turned inside out. We shaved all the, the innards off it and then we turned it back round. Uh, I say we, um, I don't have voices in my head. We being uh, myself and Al from Fat Badger Customs, Thin Brown Line. Um, again, that's four out of four videos I've mentioned his name. Um, He's kind of my go-to fixer when I can't do something. So big shout out to Al for helping me to get the r -hop to actually seal fully. Um, so I get incredible range off that and it, it's just accurate. I really do love that where you put the 
uh, crosshair on this. It just shoots. So fantastic. And um, I was with me the first game out, game day when I played out with this. And as I was shooting, I was just slowly winding the hop off more and more as the hop patch wore in. And it just got crazy. It got crazy like you'd, you'd kind of line your shot up, you pull the trigger, you turn away. And then as you were lining the shot, you'd hear that person get hit and go out. So fantastic. So as we move back, uh, standard silverback cylinder going on in here. I have put a lot of uh, kind of dry lube on it. I find the Muckoff PTFE race lubricant is really, really good. Uh, it leaves a lovely ceramic finish. Uh, it just feels smooth and, and you don't get kind of bits stuck to it. Inside that, I have a silverback variable mass piston. Uh, run a couple of aluminium collars and one steel, I think it is, just to get the, the, the kind of the mass up on that. At the front end of that, faceless mouse fart 1.3. Um, the mouse fart is easily one of the best modifications you can do to an SRS, just silences the thing off. You can't hear it from more than like four or five meters away. It's incredible. Uh, and then as we work our way back, standard spring guide, but I am using a Rapax 2J spring. Uh, I did cut a coil off of that because it was a little bit warm, um, but then I actually had to boost it back up as the spring did just kind of press in a little bit. So I think I'm running a spacer, and then the Rapax 2J, and then a few uh, kind of collars. She comes in around about 490 equivalent. I shoot four eights with it, so it's very difficult to give you an accurate number with twos. Um, when I'm shooting four eights, I come in around 319, 320. So I'm about 495 as we go. For magazines, uh, it's always the silverback metal ones. I don't use the extended dog dicks. Uh, I think they're stupid, although yes, I lose a few BBs at the end of each mag. I really don't care, because uh, at least I can get the mags back in my pouches. Um, so that's pretty much my SRS uh, in a nutshell. I don't think I've missed any parts in there. Um, obviously it's running the G-Spec kit, as you can see there. So that's a fairly solid ball barrel through the middle. Um, the only other modifications I've done to the outside of it is I've removed the QD points on there because they used to catch against me and I don't use a sling. Uh, if I'm carrying my gun, I carry it. So there we go. That is my SRS. Thank you very much if you've made it this far with me. I do promise that the kit videos like this, the kind of the general go overs are going to slowly kind of peter off now. Now that gameplay is actually possible, the videos they may slow down a little bit in their consistency, but um, hopefully the quality and the gameplay quality will improve as we go. Please do leave me a like. Please leave any kind of comments that you want, criticisms or, or even encouragement in, in the comments below. Uh, I do love engaging with it. And if you've got any questions about parts or anything like that, which I use for this, please feel free to fire them at me. And uh, if you haven't already, please do drop me a sub. I absolutely love doing these videos. I love doing the gameplay videos more. I love sitting editing them and going back over them. So uh, please do sub and, and keep an eye out for anything new coming out as well. Thank you very much for your time and uh, I will catch you soon. See you later.